Italian restaurant in a wealthy town. Charming staff, top food, happy customers. Well, that's the dream. But this is La Lanterna. And it's going down the pan fast. I don't know how long these are out of fucking order. Chef Papata, Alex Scott, is so worried about his business that he hasn't slept for four months. Because she has cooking from bollocks. His best mate Gavin runs front of house, but he hasn't got a clue. You, as a maitre d', are fucking useless. The food's expensive, the restaurant's empty most nights, and Alex is losing more than a grand a week. Quit now. If I can't turn this business around, then the lights will go out at Lanterna for good. It's fucking wake-up time. Just 20 miles north of London, Letchworth is Britain's first garden city. Slap bang in the middle of town is Lanterna. Get that to do it, Nassau. Get that to do it. It's run by British born and bred Alexander Scott. Right, hurry up. From an early age, Alex dreamt of being a chef. Squeeze a bit of lemon juice on it and pour a bit of olive oil over it. Then, childhood holidays in Italy turned him into a self confessed Italian file. Uh, quindici. So much so. He's taken to calling himself Alessandro. I think I'm a pretty decent chef, and I know it's a lot worse, and, and I do take a lot of pride in what I do. I, I'd, I'd like to get to Central. We've got a really good reputation where people travel from 40, 50 miles, 60 miles to come here for a meal, and we have got a really, really good name, like Gordon or Jamie or one of these other fellas. Helping him realise his Italian dream is Polish sidekick Eldona Novak, but she's got more attitude. An aptitude. Listen to me. Come back for me, Salak, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Alright. Try to do everything I can to try and build a business up, everything that I can possibly think of, and it's just not worth Employing friends, an ex air hostess girlfriend Emily has proved to be a dangerous mix of business and pleasure. Okay, you cancelling. I've remortgaged my house again to uh, inject some money into the business. Uh, and took out another personal loan and sort of beefed up my credit cards, but how long can we last? La Lanterne. With debts of more than £180,000, Alex is on the verge of losing everything he's got. Mm. Looks quite nice on that side. That's why I'm here, to find out what's gone wrong. Chef? Morning, Chef. Nice how to are you? you? Very well, thank you. Good. And this is it? It is. And God. It's it's small. Pokey. Yeah, very pokey. <laughs> Al Scott, executive chef. I like those. Yeah, so how many in the team? Uh, in the kitchen? Yeah. Two of us. Two. So that's why the executive. What's with the flags? Italian and English. Italian and English? Yeah. And that's the style of food, is it? It is. In, uh, Italian. Italian. And you're from um, Italy? England. Oh, England. I just always worked in the Italian kitchen. So I just sort of learned to learn the language, learn right. the style of cooking. So lots of Italian ingredients. Yeah. Where are the courgettes from? Uh, from our butcher from London this morning, but... <laughs> Cool jets from a butcher? Yes. And then where are the peppers from? Tesco's. Tesco's? They're cheaper. Are oh, they cheaper? So, uh, cool jets from the butcher, peppers from Tesco's, uh, lemons from Sardinia? Cash and curry. So, so far, I've seen fuck all Italian. It's Saturday, the only busy night at Lanterna, and a chance for me to take a close look at Alex's authentic Italian kitchen. So what's that, there? That's bechamel, which is used for the cannelloni. Packet bechamel sauce? That reminds me of my days as a hotel commie back in the early 80s. A successful Italian kitchen has to understand the secret of great Italian food. Simple, fresh Italian ingredients. Bing. What does uh, Donna do in service? Operate the microwave? In Alex's kitchen, all the vegetables are pre-cooked and blasted in the microwave. Oh, look, they're everywhere, like Christmas tree decorations. Uh, we need to do our sticker on the top shelf. We've got our fairy. <laughs> what turns you on about food? What makes you excited about food? Nothing, really. Nothing, uh, I like it. Food. And what did you do in Poland? Were you working as a chef? I worked in a tax office. In a tax office? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> so, uh, why cooking? I don't know. I don't... I don't know. I don't actually cook. Great start. A Polish assistant who won't cook 
and an English chef who seemingly can't. But the menu promises modern Italian cuisine, and at 30 quid a head, it's got to be good to keep the customers coming back. Nice, if you like matchmakers. Maybe I have a game of dominoes. The packet Grassini matches the decor, straight out of a 1980s fake Italian trattoria. To see what Alex is made of, I've asked him to serve me up some Italian classics. First up, fresh minestrone soup. This should be a star hit on any Italian menu. Oh, my God. Very, very greasy. Yeah. Dirty all stuck around the outside. I'll pass on that one. What is that? Oh, it's parsley on the stalk. Next, salsiccia Lugano. Fresh Italian sausages baked in white wine and served on garlic bread. Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear. And it looks like two poodle's penises doused in parsley. I almost like feel I've gone back to sort of 1982, where every other restaurant in the high street was an Italian ripoff. We're now in the 21st century and they're still serving crap like this. <sighs> Fucking disgusting. Ugh. Even worse, the amaretto cake is bought in. Um, unfortunately, not quite defrosted, slightly frozen in the centre. Oh, dear, dear. This is about as authentic as a fucking Chinese takeaway. Right, mm. Alessandro. You talk passionately about, you know, Italian ingredients, authenticity. I saw nothing Italian. And nothing done with care. I'm concerned about where you're going, how long this place has got to last, and unfortunately delivered fuck all. And that was way, way, way below par. Do you think this is funny? No. No? Because I didn't find it funny. That was upsetting. Because that was fucking dire. Alex may think that I'm his worst nightmare, but this really is my idea of kitchen hell. He's in such meltdown. He's even let the most basic standards of hygiene slip. You'd think he'd have cleaned up. I mean, it's not as if he didn't know I was coming. There's no excuse for filth as bad as this. When was the last time the place was really properly cleaned? It's cleaned every Friday afternoon. Yeah? Bullshit. When was the last time all the fridges were pulled out? Pulled out? No. Um, that was done about two weeks ago. What about all the bread rolls down behind the fridge now? You can see them from here, look. That's how Donna she throws Aldona. bread up into the... Uh, uh, Aldona throws bread up into the basket. To dry out. To dry out for breadcrumbs. And she misses, so it all goes down the back of the fridge. Dirty lady. What about this pile of shit here? What about them? With the kitchen in this state, Alex risks further damage to Lantana's already fragile yeah. reputation. Oh, fuck it now. It's never been used. What about these trays here? What were they done last? It could even be closed down. That, if we do that, the, oven, stops, the oven doesn't stop working when we change oh, it. Oh, fuck it now. Are you ever going to tell me the truth? It does. Don't worry about the oven breaking, <laughs> yeah? That's replaceable. Giving a customer fucking food poisoning is not. Yeah? Yeah. Look, look at that in there. That is gross. That is fucking disgusting. Everywhere you turn in this kitchen, there's another surprise. Look. Mussels on the floor. Stuff everywhere. Produce just left going mouldy again. And then there's a pot noodle on there. Who the fuck is eating pot noodles? Almighty. There's 60 customs out there. I am so fucking glad they can't see where their food's coming from, how it's cooked, and what the fuck is going on behind the scenes, because it's a mess, and it's a fucking embarrassment. Fucking disgusting. Oh, my God. That is taking the fucking piss. Fuck it in hell. It's my second day at Lanterna, where I'm trying to drag it back from the depths of despair. Alex has told me he's tried everything he can to save the business. The new head chef, Alexander, promises exceptional food and an enjoyable evening for every occasion. Lanterna, when only the very best will do. Fuck me. Only the very best will do. The kitchen's a fucking dirty, filthy mess. Exquisite, classic Italian food. God, what a fucking spook. Radio ad, 
It's going to take a lot more than that to get this place back on track. When was the last time the fridges were done? Last week. What that's, is that? That's finished from Saturday night, so that's just a special order. Jesus Christ. I'm shocked by the levels of hygiene here. I wouldn't even serve that to a fucking pig, you know that. Alex isn't even following the basic rules. There's got to be, Mac, no matter what you're doing, from a bacon sandwich to a fucking tortellini of fucking goat cheese. You have to stay immaculate. Ovens should be cleaned after every service. The floor should be spotless. And leftover food should be thrown away or stored in clearly labelled containers. More pa Oh, fucking hell. Whose fingers have been in there? I, I need to throw this stuff away because I'm nervous. Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Fuck you, shit. With standards this low, Alex's right. authentic Italian kitchen... Look at that in there. ...could be closed down. Who's that? Cho, environmental health. Morning. Hey, mate. Environmental health? No. No, damn. Pest control. Pest control? Yeah. Fuck me, do we need you? Come in. Yeah, he knows what he's got to do. He's just oh. going to check the rat cat around. One saving okay. grace. They've never had rats or mice in this kitchen. E-H-O. Not right, yeah? But yeah. there is one pest I'd like to control, and that's Alex. He's been scurrying around in his own mess for far too long. Yeah. Can you see where we are now? Absolutely. You know, um, I've had a very um, embarrassing dinner. I've come back into the kitchen. The place is in a mess. You've taken your eye off the ball. The passion's gone, and we've really got to get this thing back up. Let's get all that clean without any bullshit. <laughs> With a clean kitchen, I can focus on the main problem. Alex is cooking. Quite frankly, it's clearly a really fraudulent imitation of 1970s Italian crap. Because when you walk into a kitchen and spot a bottle of lazy lemon, it means lazy bastard, nothing more. For me, I don't know where to fucking start with the food, you know, because I, what I want to do is try and store that kind of freshness and give it a sense of Finish. Italian style, influence. Yeah. But Italian food wasn't built up on fucking frozen food run under water, yeah? Because, quite frankly, all I've seen you do so far is reheat things. I know the food's rubbish, but I need to see how he gets it on the plate. <laughs> I've never seen a chef work at this breakneck speed and yet achieve so little. Oh, fucking hell. That little fucker's got all the energy in the world, but it's just channeled in the wrong direction. Because he's actually jumping around and doing fuck all. He looks fucking busy, but he's actually cooking shit badly. Fucking poco deal. <laughs> That's my Red Bull. With a diet of five Red Bulls a day, Alex is so wired, he bashes out the food as though his life depends on it. Most of his food comes in frozen, or from a packet, and I know why. He's lazy. Instead of getting ready for his customers, he'd rather play golf all day than rock up an hour before service with his best mate, Gavin Swires. There's a woman coming, saying she's got a table of seven people, to seven. How many's booked now, Gavin? Um, I'm going to need to double count again. This Gavin is, guy is the restaurant manager, the face of Lanterna. Does he know what he's doing out there? We'll have a walk up the road because we think we may have got the wrong place. But it looks like the dining room is operated with about as much finesse as the kitchen. You say you want to run it as an Italian restaurant. Well, maybe 30 years ago, I can understand why this exists, but not now. And quite frankly, it's not going to go any further, is it? No. Nowhere near it. Not with those. Yeah? That. Those. Yeah? Well, I was taught to cook by uh, a very well-respected Italian chef. Mm -hmm. Well, that's total bullshit, because there was nothing Italian there. Nothing anywhere. Alex tells me this well-respected chef is still in the area. Maybe he can shed some light on the source of Alex's inspiration. <laughs> Mario, yes. the famous chef. Sort of. Yeah, you taught Alex everything he knew. Is that right? Yeah. And did you introduce him to bechamel and demi glace and masala? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was you. What? 
I'm the responsible one. What? Is something go wrong? Fucking hell, Marion. Where do you want me to start? <laughs> huh? It turns out Alex spent his formative years with Italian-born Mario, known locally as Hertfordshire's King of the Trattorias. And obviously went very well, because now you're a taxi driver. <laughs> No, it's up in a stage where I was fed up with the kitchen. Really? You know, if it doesn't work out for Alex, I suppose I can come and bring him to the rank? Yeah. Because his food's fucking rank. Yeah. Yeah, see? <laughs> but he's a lousy driver as well. He's a lousy driver as well. Yeah. Fucking hell. I'll let you get back to your rank. Thank you very much. They're really soft, those hands. They're like baby's bottoms. Yeah. Get back in the kitchen. Yeah. Huh? Uh, Ciao, day. Mario. Good morning. It seems the extent of Alex's knowledge of authentic Italian cuisine stretches no further than Luton. Alex needs to bite the bullet and relaunch the restaurant with a fresh identity of his own. But a new image costs money, and Alex is at the end of his tether financially. How do you pay yourself? I haven't paid myself a wage for four months. Bloody hell. I mean, is your business really on the line of going bust? Oh, absolutely. It is very much so on the line. Because I'll lose everything. The house, everything. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all tied up in a business, so if it all goes wrong, I'll walk away with absolutely nothing. Alex's past seems full of bad financial decisions. After just two weeks of running Lanterna, success went to his head. And instead of getting his cooker fixed, he spent £46,000 on a new car. With no spare cash, Alex can't afford to turn the business around. Can you fucking slow down a bit, please? I'm feeling sick. Fucking hell. Why on earth did you buy it? Truthfully, uh, I love cars. And what I'm trying to say is, do you think you've got your priorities right? Look down at the number plate. Do you have a small dick that you... No, not at all. No. Uh, you don't need a car for transport to get to work? No. No? You live above the restaurant? Yep. New commitments? Yep. Big responsibility? Absolutely. Fucking big responsibility. Then you go and splash out in a fucking car. Yeah. So we've got to recuperate money back to get yep. back into the business, to keep the business open. Absolutely. So, we've got to sell it. I mean, if you had the choice of keeping the car and closing the business, because that's what's going to happen shortly. Yeah. Use the car, keep the business. At last, he's got his priorities right. And with the car up for sale on the internet, I've got him a good deal on a new cooker. I need to get 38 for it to clear the finance. Shit. Maybe I can ring around and see if we can get rid of that number plate. Please do. Now, let's think of a fucking grade A, class A chef. <coughs> Hi, Anthony. Hi. I need some help. Please? Everyone knows I have a lot of respect for TV chef Anthony Royal Thompson. Mm, not really my cup of tea, Gordon. Not your cup of tea. I didn't think it would be, you know that. <sighs> and we know you're not in need of a penis extension. Exactly that. Um, you're not interested. John Christopher Novelli, he's got a massive ego, hasn't he? John Christopher I'll give him a call. <laughs> hey, JC, please. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm trying to. No, 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 listen, I'm trying to sell it. I'm listening to you. I'm going to kick your fucking ass. You're going to kick my ass. <laughs> hey, hold on a minute, I'm going to ask you. What's wrong with the private plane then? I don't want my good look like on my bicycle with a fucking body. <laughs> <laughs> With the car and the number plate up for sale, we can move forward. It's time to get Alex to do something he clearly hasn't done for a very long time. I want him to start cooking. This is a way of taking all your frustration out, yeah, in your graffiti. Yeah. Alex needs all the help he can get, and I want to see if any of his kitchen staff have hidden talents. I want each of you to make a pizza. Whoever has the best tasting pizza will put it on the menu tonight as a special. I've discovered that Joe, the kitchen porter, has trained as a cook. Uh, explain yours to me. Pepper. Uh-huh. Mushroom. Cheese. Nice. Tomato sauce, mushroom, onion, Good. cheese. And Chef Alex. My nice. four seasons with artichokes, green peppers, black olives and parma ham with a little bit of basil. You flash bastard. OK, Joe, here we go. Excuse me, do you want to come into our restaurant to try some pizza we just made? Thank you. Here we go. Right, Joe, just explain to the lady what we've done. Have you got two seconds? Yes. We've just made these amazing pizzas. And this lady's coming to taste them. Would you come yeah, in and just taste them with us? You uh, look like a man a little bit undernourished. Bring on the pizza, Alexandra. And I bet you're a vegetarian. I am. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right, we have a vegetarian <laughs> pizza. How long have you been vegetarian? 
mm, about eight years. God. So it's been very right. well. Yeah. What I didn't realise was that Aldona put Parma ham on the base of her mozzarella and tomato pizza. Carla, um, which one do you actually prefer? The last one that I tried. Uh, the last one? I'd go for that one. The mozzarella one. Yeah. Mm. Unfortunately, that's got lots of mozzarella and tomato, but underneath that <laughs> is Parma ham. Oh, no, that was me. No, no, I didn't know that. Was... <laughs> this is the lady who made them. Come forward. Aldona. Come here. There you go. See? Well done. You've never made pizza in your life. You converted a vegetarian. Yeah. OK. Would you like some more? No, thank you. Oh, come on. There's nothing wrong with you now. You haven't come out in a big rash. Thank you, Bob. Thanks. Take care. Good luck with the Vegemite. Fresh food on the menu marks a new start for Lanterna. But it's going to be a huge step for Alex. Goodbye, plastic. Jeez. Look at that in there. People are eating that. It's so strong, this demidas, it's not going down the sink. Look, it's all here. I'm banning all traces of plastic sauces from the premises. Now Alex will have to cook from fresh. In an attempt to slow Alex down in the kitchen, I'm cutting his menu by half. Why have you got three chicken dishes on? Just for variation. Mm -hmm. Trying to give people more choice. Yeah, well, I've seen all three of them, and I think they're all shit. You know that, because they're all clogged with the same fucking sauce. Two of them can go. And I'm not doing that or saying that to put you in the shit, but you are in a position to regenerate, rejuvenate, those customers and put a little bit of freshness and a lot of excitement to your customers, you know that? Yeah. With a limited menu and some new dishes, tonight is Alex's big chance to prove to me that he's capable of cooking from fresh. It's something I'd expect one of my most junior chefs to pull off without a hitch. Hey, check on. One prawn cocktail, two parmigiana, one soup. First table's in. So normally Alex goes like this. Jesus Christ, then everyone gets really dizzy. First table, oh shit. Damn. Oh, damn. Slow down, yeah? yeah? I want to really make sure that you stay nice and calm, yeah? Yeah. But show some composure now, yeah? Absolutely. But the kitchen's only half the story. <laughs> For the evening to run smoothly, the dining room's got to be well managed by the maitre d'. Yeah. <laughs> Specials. But the maitre d' is Alex's best mate. It's Gavin's first job as a restaurant manager, and I don't think he's got a clue. We have a couple of portions left. Very nice. I did have that for dinner before I started. Highly recommended. OK. It doesn't help that Gavin's supported front of house by Emily, Alex's girlfriend. The chicken was cold. It's 70 degrees when I broke it. What do you want to do? Anything? It wasn't cold. Her only experience of serving food comes from seven years as an air hostess. That's why I probe everything. You are the maitre d', aren't you? You're running the place. But you've got to get some authority around you, you know that. You've got to get some presence. Look at those peripheral rolls over there. That's how big your bollock should be. That big. Now, find them and fucking use them. Just a drizzle. No. Alex, yep. nice and calm. Oh, yeah. yeah actually. Alex isn't doing too badly, but it's not long before Gavin's way out his depth. He should be taking orders now, though. Huh? What is he doing out there? Gavin's managed to get 60 people booked in for tonight. But he's allowed 40 of them to arrive at the same time. I think we're going to be in the shit in 10 minutes' we're time, you know in a fucking dog shit. Huh? Any manager worth his weight should know he's got to stagger the bookings to keep a steady flow of orders coming into the kitchen. <laughs> You okay now? Yeah. Yeah, good. You don't look it. Scrape off a little bit and clip it. Yeah, okay. You sit up there and call it out. What? Call it out. What is it? Tell me what it is. Too bad, sir. Okay, now, here we go again. Oh, no. Nightmare returns. Let's do another one. Under pressure. All Alex's bad habits come flooding back. He's all out of fucking order. First time in his entire career he's actually had to cook properly. And it's pretty obvious he can't do it. Completely in the shit and lost it big time. Which one next? Nothing together. And he's just clammed up and, and I've got a 
good mind to get that number plate off that fucking car and stick it up his ass sideways. Alex and Gavin are like two little boys playing at running a restaurant. I've never worked like this. I hate saying it, but so close to cowboys. Mm. You know that? Quit now. Yeah. Put the restaurant up for sale. I'm more than halfway through my week at Lanterna, but last night's attempt at putting freshly cooked food on the menu proved a total disaster. Alex has a long way to go if he's going to become a half-decent Italian chef. And his mate Gavin gives an equally pathetic performance. It's just so frustrating when you show them time and time again the perfect opportunity for a great local Italian eatery in the middle of a very wealthy town. And you can make such a great business out of it, but I don't know if they've got it. You jumped up, little fucking prick. Who the fuck do you think you are? Because you, as a major D, are fucking useless. I've done right. it to upset right. you, so you come back to me. I'm going come to have to teach Gavin how to get tough right. if he's turn. going to have any authority. Take a deep breath. Tell me exactly what you think right now. What's going through your head and get it off your chest? With his staff and his Tell customers. Them. Get it out! <laughs> Look, there's no one here, for <laughs> fuck's sake! We're in the middle of a field! You've got to have authority and mm. customers have got to walk in there looking for you yeah and you've got to get a reputation yeah at right. the moment i just see this sort of little lost boy moping around and there's things that are going on in that dining room that you should be aware of yet you're totally clueless right. so i'm really nervous that you're not supporting alex properly right. so what i want you to do is start getting angry right why right. did you send that stop that sounds like a fucking dickhead in a choir why, the golden well, rule in any dining room, you Jump. have to be Give in control of smile. your staff. What the fuck do you think you're doing, you fucking idiot? Like that. And not let your staff right. control Jump. you. Why was that food taken? Oh, star, that's not good enough. You sound like a right fucking limp dick. What the fuck are you doing taking the food to table six, not table seven? You fucking idiot. You fucking idiot. Can you not read the order in the kitchen? Excellent. Gavin needs to gain Excellent. the respect of his team so they know who's the boss. Right. Then he can start running the restaurant with a bit of flair. No, you've really found your bollocks. OK. Give it all this time. OK. What are you doing, you stupid idiot? Where's your fucking brain tonight? Is it up your ass? During last night's service, Alex looked a right mess. One that's been recording to have a windy before. See if he notices. <laughs> I think you're a dirty fucker. Show me your fingernails. Ugh, fucking hell. I want you looking immaculate. Okay. Smart enough and just lifting that whole sort of image. So, any chance to give him a quick clean up? Yes, that's yeah? fine. Yeah, yeah, don't go too close in case it bites. <laughs> <laughs> With a fresh, clean Alex, I want a fresh, clean look for the menu. Alex has confessed that he doesn't eat fresh fruit, vegetables, or fish. If we're ever going to make this restaurant work, I've got to get him to develop a better sense of taste for decent food. Get the fucking blindfolds on. I'm putting swordfish on the new menu, and I want Alex to choose the pasta that will be served with it. And you look younger with that gun today, you know that, huh? A lot younger. Right, first one. Quite an interesting one, this one. We're starting with a strong blue cheese. There you go. Open wide, thank you. There you go. Nice, fine noodles. Go in. I've, I had a hint of light, like light, pestoey. Light pesto -y. That's all nut, walnut. Nutty? Mm. I think you're fucking nutty, you know that. This is an intriguing one, the second one. You can actually smell what's on there, you know that? Open wide? Next up, fresh herbs and olive oil. Good. Definitely freshly chopped herbs in there, not a uh, Fresh dried. chopped herbs, yeah. that's interesting. Not dried. Not dried, yeah. That's not bad. Finally, something I found lurking in Alex's larder. OK, this one, so spicy. So, um. That was very nice, actually. Yeah. Very tomato, is it? Uh huh. And, um, more saucy than the other two, but still very nice. Out of all three pastas, which one would you serve with a swordfish? I'd say the last one. The last one. Yeah, I'd say the last one. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Alex's taste buds Take have been sullied by plastic sauces for too long. The last one was a fucking pot noodle. Is it? <laughs> a curry pot noodle. <laughs> pot noodle. 
I've got to awaken his senses and give him a standard to aim towards. Since I first met him, Alex has blamed everything but himself for his lack of success. Fresh produce. So I'm taking him to a neighbourhood restaurant that's sustained a great reputation for 14 years, based on simple Italian cooking. Um, this chef's been here since um, the opening. Francesco. Morning, gentlemen. Morning. Uh, how are you? Very well, very yeah, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, Alex has got a, a small, um, how would you call it, modern Italian? Yeah. Uh, plastic Italian restaurant in Letchworth. Yeah. Um, for me, the most important thing is just to look at the size of this kitchen. Yeah. This is smaller than yours. Yeah, you don't need a big kitchen to prepare good food. No, you've got one stove there. One stove. And what's the secret behind Italian cuisine? What is it? Simplicity. Simplicity. Simplicity yeah. is freshness of ingredient. And no pot noodles, no? No, nope. no. No, interesting. No, 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 no. No. No, no frozen food either. No frozen food. Mm. Well, piglet in the oven at the moment. Oh, lovely. Piglet, lovely. Very simple, rosemary, garlic, fennel seeds. Nice. And how are you serving that? Uh, just with roast potatoes. Lovely. Do a very light gravy. And do you use any bechamel sauce? No. No. I've been in here five minutes. I am absolutely starving. Thank you. I want Alex to taste the difference between his frozen bought in ravioli and something an Italian kitchen can be proud to serve. I want you to taste this. Yeah. Really nice, fresh flavour pumpkin, unlike ours, which clean. is clean. Mm. Clean. Anything stuck to the roof of your mouth? No. No. No stodge. The mustard fruit there. Stodge. Really nice sage butter. Are you capable of doing something like this? Definitely. Absolutely. But do you really want to do it? I really want to do it. Am really? I wasting my fucking time? Not at all. Not at all. You will see a big difference. It's been a big wake-up call the last couple of days, and it's going to get me into focus, get the staff into focus, and get things to how they should be, and mm. get things working again. But I'm quite nervous, because I think you'll let it fall through your fingers. It will work. It's not an option. But if it doesn't work, and you don't wake up, what will you do? I will wake up. <laughs> I, I will stick at it. I, I hope it. you do I will. it. I will. But I don't think you will. I will. And I'm telling you that in order for you to prove me wrong. Yeah, and I will prove you wrong. And just before we go, I mean, you're a great chef, aren't you? Nice car. Nice car. Um, what about the number plate? Can I sell you the number plate? <laughs> A1 chef. Um, how much is it uh, going for? The car. No, the plate. fucking number plate. 1800. 1800. 1800. So, would you have a private number plate? No. No. Uh, even though you're an A1 chef? Yeah. You still wouldn't have a plate? No. So what the fuck are you doing with it on your car? <laughs> <laughs> Alex has had his car and number plate up for sale for the last week, and we're praying for some good news. Oh, not shit. And unfortunately, your item did not sell. Yeah. I was rather hoping we could get rid of it today, you know, that, oh, and have a conclusive sale. Yeah. It's not the result Alex was hoping for. But with Lanterna in desperate need of a revamp, I want to show him it's possible to change the look of the restaurant without spending lots of money. The interior was designed by Alex's girlfriend, Emily. And then we've got rustic brickwork down the end. But her idea seemed to be based on dodgy hotels she stayed in as a charter fly air hostess. For the price of a couple of tins of paint, we can rid Lanterna of his 1980s trattoria look. Charles, I don't think you should touch it. Right. We'll, we'll go with Emily's. She's well, the... I think uh, she should. Whose restaurant is it? Is it yours and Alex? It's Alex's. It's Alex's restaurant. It's Emily's last choice. It was ghastly, so I think she, she should have less of an involvement next time round. You don't trust me because the last colour. Uh, well, it's not because I don't trust you. I think it needs to be a substantial improvement. Uh, Emily wants pale day. walls. Alex, is your restaurant? I, I, I'd like Get to your darker. goonies out and make a decision. <laughs> I'd like to go darker. <laughs> it's Lanterna's first birthday tomorrow night and a perfect opportunity to relaunch the restaurant. Right, just give me two. But in order to make it work, Alex has to be completely committed to his kitchen. It's really exciting making nice homemade soups. Yeah. And when you think of Italian restaurants, you always think of stuff being homemade. I'm replacing the disgusting minestrone soup with a rich Tuscan bean soup instead. Uh, have a quick look at the menu. Yeah. Yeah, I'll done read the menu. I've slimmed down the menu from a three-page epic to a simple handful of classic Italian dishes, all freshly cooked by Alex. Now look at the colour of it. Yeah? What do you think of the prices? And I've cut his prices to give value for money. 
not a concept Alex has ever been familiar with. And that sets you up with 15 to 20 portions of soup at four pound a portion. That's flavor. 80 pound return. That you've got to put 12 to 15 minutes love into it. Yeah. It's fuck all. You know. I want Alex to have every chance of making it a success. Bam. Get rid of. Just see how elegant that is. Nice and white. Kevin, what do you reckon? Much better than white. The paper tablecloths cost next to nothing, and the paintings come courtesy of a local art college. Alex, what do you think? It's fucking bollocks, isn't it? It just looks great. Absolutely great. With a fully booked restaurant for the relaunch comes Alex's chance to forge a new reputation. Okay, guys, big night. New menu. New. Yeah. Lots of exciting, fresh ingredients. New dining room. So yeah. walk around with a little bit of grace and put a bit of passion into it, yeah, as if you really want it. Yeah? This, this is, is Lanterna's last bite of the cherry. Okay, Tuscan bean soup. Very simple. Um, if Alex and his um, troops can remember what I've taught them, of, then there's uh, just a chance tonight might be a success. On the top. OK, can we just highlight the bottom of the menu here very, very quickly? Today's celebration, first anniversary of Lanterna Restaurant. From now on, Alexandra Scott will not be using microwaves or synthetic sauces. And I so fucking mean that. You know that? Yeah? yeah? yeah. OK. Ready? Yep. Let's go. Good luck. Just really hope you know, I don't fuck up and make any mistakes. Just really want to get it right. Just, uh, just want Gordon to say, yeah, you did good. Or OK. OK is good. Alex has got all the right ingredients here to make a bloody good business, but can he pull it off? Fuck knows. One order, one sausage, one soup. Main course is one polo, work two swordfish. Yes, yeah, chef. Yes, chef. That's better. Gently, no, 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 just gently, gently. We filled the dining room with some of Letchworth's local dignitaries. But as the guests start piling in. One soup, one. one soup, the cracks in Alex's one cooking one sausage, begin to show. Right. So two sausages, yeah? Come on, yeah? guys. Yeah. I've done it again, Pesce, now. You get it for crazy ready, yeah. But then yeah, start, start doing the veg, yeah. Start doing yeah. the veg, yeah. 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 We're not a lot of very happy bunnies at the moment, I don't think. <laughs> An hour and 15 minutes, we've had an olive. <laughs> Can we reorder and have breakfast instead? Bollocks. Fucking shit. Alex seems to be falling at the first hurdle. We need two licks to free book. Alex, yeah. talk to Aldona. Yeah. Get a yeah, I'm a bit yeah. lost at the moment. I know, I know. I know you lost, but... What, what, you've just gone really, really, really quiet. You know that? I don't know. What? It's fine, so I keep repeating everything. There's only one man who can get us out of this mess and help salvage Lanterna's reputation. Just give me Gavin, please. We'll take Parmesan. Right, Gavin. Hello. Kitchen's in the ship. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty obvious. Yeah, it's a big night tonight. And the night we should be in the ship. Hello? Yeah, how many linguine have you sold? Uh, not many. I don't think many at all. Yeah, we haven't sold thing. one yet. No. Yeah, so in order to help the kitchen, start pushing the fucking linguine a little bit, yeah, so we can okay. take a bit of weight off Alex's shoulders, yeah? And push the soup as well, stuff that we can really start flying the starters out, please, yeah? Okay, sure. Let's go. I want Gavin to show some bottle. If he can motivate his team and start selling the ready prepared specials, that will take the pressure off Alex and get the kitchen back on track. Well done, let me just tell you, he's, added, he's sold so on the squash in here now, he just sold another four portions. Hey, can well I get done. A Alex. Yeah, welcome oh. back. What did we discuss in the field the other day about having what? Profiterol yeah. balls. Coolio. Yeah, profiterol balls. That's exactly that. Have you found them? Yeah. Excellent. Hey, well done. Yeah. Uh, you just made the restaurant. Yeah. Another fifteen quid. Yeah. By Gavin pushing the specials, it's given Alex some space to calm down and start cooking like a proper chef. Parmigiana. One blue. Oh la la, blue. Uh, Get this one right. Special night like tonight, yeah. Yeah. After the last two and a half hours of fucking mayhem, yeah? yeah. With the right sort of encouragement, he might just pull it off. I bet you ever cook it. No, I don't. I bet you fucking do. I'm apologising now because Alex yeah. will overcook the blue steak again. Right. Okay. Sorry. That's it. It's hardly dinner at the Cipriani, but it's not bad. No, it's not blue. Come on. And yeah, 
food, and the customers are liking it too. Nice. Very nice. Good. I never Good. thought I'd say it. Look at that saltfish. But thanks to Gavin's newfound confidence, the Letchworth boys have come good. Just more salt. Rome wasn't built in a day, but at least I've brought Alex kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. So far, very good. The timing's a little bit slow, but otherwise, very good. Yeah, it's been excellent. Tonight it was something a bit different, something a bit different about it. About it. The sauce, the, you know, it was just it was excellent. Happy first birthday. Yeah. May your second be even better. Yeah. Um, Emily, happy with the dining room? Yes. That is a pathetic answer. That means no, I fucking hate it. <laughs> no, um, I've asked it, Alex to yeah. make sure that you don't get a paintbrush in your hand again. Yes? <laughs> if it's a roll man, I'll take you down that field again. You know that. <laughs> All right, say it to me once more. What, well, the whole lot? The whole fucking lot. <laughs> the whole fucking lot. The whole fucking Are you lot. Sure? I'm positive in front of your <laughs> colleagues. Come on. Where's your fucking brain tonight? It's up your fucking ass. Why the fuck did you take table six's order to table seven, you stupid wanker? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I really want them to succeed, but it'll take a lot of commitment and hard work to make this place a real success. Right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Chin chin. Cheers. Oh, you smooth bastard. Huh? Six weeks later, and I can't wait to see how things are going at Lanterna. Very well, how are you? Very well, thank you. You well? She screamed at I thought, what's going on? You had a dream about me last night. I thought you'd a neighbour. I killed you. <laughs> You're not wrong there, you know that. Yeah. When I first visited, I found chef proprietor Alex Scott living in a dream world. I don't know how long. He believed he was a talented Italian chef, but his kitchen was filthy. I wouldn't even serve that to a fucking pig, you know that. The food was dire and overpriced. Fucking disgusting. And to make matters worse, his restaurant manager, Gavin, was a wimp. You, as a major D, are fucking useless. No wonder Alex was drowning in debt and about to lose his home and his business. Yeah. I've never worked like this, you know, so close to cowboys. You know that? After a week of hard slog, Lanterna was reinvented and given the potential to become a great neighbourhood restaurant. Look at that swordfish, beautiful. Now I'm back to see if my time at Lanterna had any lasting effect. Excuse me, you don't walk in, eh? After the way you shouted at me, I'm sorry. I thought at least you'd fucking <laughs> make a bit of presence. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, louder. Oh, are yeah, you, okay? Follow that's crap. Come on, Where you Where the fucker. fuck have you been the last fucking two months? We've been fucking hanging around waiting for you, you lazy fucking bastard. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. Good to see you. Thank you well? <laughs> that's better. Excellent. Where's Aldona's Christmas tree and vegetables? Don't yeah, do those little anymore. stack. They've all gone now. Do them all to order. Everything's done to order. Thank God those revolting, overcooked vegetables are off the menu. Nice. Overall, the whole staff enthusiasm is lifted. Uh, and you look cleaner. Show me nails. Not bad. Have I you feel, been I feel stuck bit... in the car wash for three weeks. <laughs> huh? I feel re you know refreshed, reinvented. I'm happy about what I'm doing. Yeah. The cleaner cooker gets done. Uh, every morning. I can't believe what I'm seeing. It gets stripped down. Joe oh, does. Open doors. Show me. Surprise me, Alex. That's not bad. So what's that in there? That's my um, mix of my almond tart, so it's just... It's Fuck a... me. <laughs> Fuck me. Serious? I'm speechless. Alex is actually Fuck cooking. Me. Got my pasta dough in here. Ooh. We have ravioli filled with mushrooms and walnut. Jesus Christ. Fuck it now. Yeah. You all right? <laughs> yeah? He surprised me. I know he surprised me. Um, and you know, <laughs> you know... A little bit sort of surprises. Um, in shock. Thank you. I didn't think you were capable of doing it. The amount of time I'm spending in the kitchen now is, is like, say, about four hours more to what I was doing. And the more work and effort and the more care you put into food, the more it hurts when it goes wrong. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, it's an it interesting relationship. I mean, yeah. it looks like you've now started to sort of really wake up and understand that bond with food. E uh -huh. Each time I make, like, the ravioli, I'm improving every time. Uh, obviously, tasting the food is, is better and uh, using the fresh ingredients. Mm -hmm. Well, we've talked the talk. Yep. Now I want to eat the fucking food. Okay, good. Yeah? Yep. I hope his extra commitment in the kitchen is reflected in the standard of his food. 
You can close your eyes and actually count the flavours, the seps, the walnuts, the pasta. It's very good. I'm pleased to see he's stuck to a small, very simple Italian menu. And everything's freshly cooked. Mm. This is the kind of food you should be serving. Real, hearty, rustic, wholesome Italian food. Rich with tomatoes, nice texture in the meatball, and a perfectly cooked linguine. Lovely. Fuck me. Here's Lexworth, ready for Alex Scott. Alex has come a long way since his plastic sources just six weeks ago. Last time you were struggling to sort of live, survive, yeah. depending on credit cards? Yeah. In the ship? Yep. Yeah. We cleared, I mean, Christmas, we basically cleared off all our debts, all our business and personal debts. Yeah. Started afresh, started a new year with a clear bank balance. Uh -huh. uh, paid off all the backdated rent, and, you know, we're, we're staying on two feet now, and we're having a good January compared to everyone else in the area. Even though he's still got the car, Alex has managed to clear £20,000 worth of debt. It's a bit car in here now, isn't it? <laughs> and can finally afford to pay himself a wage. Not making proud yet. But there's still one thing standing in the way of Alex's success. And that's Alex. I sincerely hope he doesn't try to run before he can walk. I just want Gordon to come back in a year's time and say, yes, Alex, you are an A1 chef. That's what? Gordon Lino. Vegetables, delicious. Unfortunately, just um, battered to fuck uh, veal. We'll pass that on. Please. Between them, they've learned how to crack the egg. Battered to fuck, literally. He was hoping for like, a nice big piece of veal. There's no, there's no texture. But apart from that, very nice. But they haven't yet made the omelette. We've been uh, cooking now for six weeks. Because yeah. that's all I'm going to say, that you're cooking properly for six weeks. Yeah. And it takes years. You know that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Please don't forget that. Oh, no, it's a big wake-up call going to Riva. Just really sort of uh -huh. working out to what can be done on yeah. small premises. Yeah. Using fresh ingredients. What you're saying is that you're no longer a fucking cowboy. Absolutely. 100%. So yeah. when you think that things are going perfectly right and you don't really need to improve, think back to the days of powdered yeah. stock. Yeah, but you always learn that that and is. And put so. the shits up yourself, because yeah. there's going to be no one here in five minutes to do that for you. Yeah. Do it yourself now. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your help. Really appreciate it. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Just one last thing before I go. Hello. Gary? Yeah? Hi, oh, mate. It's Gordon. How are you? Good. Mate, listen, I need a favour. I'm a little bit in the shit, to be honest. Now, Gary Rose is truly an A1 chef. I can give it to you for £2,998. You've got to be joking for that kind of money. Look, I'll tell you why, because there's one bunch of GR. Hold on a minute. <laughs> You've got a number plate with... You haven't got the same, have you? I've got a 22GR. 22GR. There you go. Fuck it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, give it to me from there so I'll think about it. OK, OK. 500 quid, I'll take you. OK, mate, 500 quid. Listen, 500 quid. Uh, I'll go back to him 500 quid and hopefully we sold the fucking thing.